So in Lashley's discussion, addressing the running back situation, you touched on it. Does it sound as though he believes that they can't go into the season with some kind of committee approach that he really wants a number one back? He wants somebody to take the majority of carries because it's harder to get somebody in a rhythm if you keep rotating, you know, and I think with having somebody who's in a rhythm uh, and from what he said, that would be a beneficial addition for the offense. Now, if you look back to SMU when he was there, he had guys who were like, you know, number one in carries and then there were, uh, there was a clear gap between two and three and four, uh, including probably your quarterback somewhere in there, um, you know, just with scrambles and running around. But yeah, you know, when you have a guy to lean on, you know, different guys run different ways. So in the ways that they work with the offensive line and they read those blocks and hit those holes and work together, it's a symbiotic relationship. So when you keep changing one of those components, even if you have the other thing being constant, you're going to have a different product. So yeah, we're looking for consistency uh, in that, uh, I think was the real foundation for looking to maybe have a number one running back to give a settling foundation to the running game and then you can add in the other guys because then they can be schemed up to be explosive because you already have hopefully a proper level of performance from your set starter uh, or the bell cow feature back, whatever you want to call it. And no, I'm not going to say that it's going to be three yards in a cloud of dust like you know Michigan in 1971. I'm not going to say it's going to be anything like that. But somebody who takes the majority of the snaps uh, to get into a rhythm to help the offense moving forward, that's I think what he's looking for. We see a ton of regulars there in the live chat, including Cheryl. Cheryl, uh, thanks for joining. Moderator Cheryl, who uh, certainly does a fine job there uh, in that role in the live chat. So Sam is asking about Xavier Restrepo, and uh, Cam gave a very fine dissertation on the show last week, um, yeah. kind of tying that um, analogy of Major League Baseball to Restrepo. Any further oh, yeah. thoughts on that? We, the, we the understand that here all the time to hear that. Yeah, the 4A player comparison to Mike Hessman uh, from the Toledo Mud Hens, famously. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Restrepo, he's a guy who's in play, man. He's a gamer, he's a scrapper, uh, and he works really hard. He's uh, You can tell that he's bigger from hitting the weight room and everything. He's only, you know, 5'8, five, 5'9, five, um, you know, and you wouldn't think, okay, this, you know, Hispanic kid or whatever uh, would like, be that kind of athletic and things like that. But I mean, you can look at him and think, you know, that he's not going to do something. But this is a kid who played at St. Thomas Aquinas for three years and didn't just like attend Aquinas. He played on those teams. He transferred to Deerfield because Deerfield is one of the schools in Broward County Public Schools that has an IB program. So that has high level academics and that trickles down to the, the regular school as well. But that also with those high level academics, lets you graduate early, which is something you cannot do from a lot of the parochial schools because of their second semester religion uh, component to their uh, academic offerings. So he elected to leave St. Thomas to go to another top tier school, uh, both athletically and academically in Deerfield so that he could come to Miami early. He made that you know elective choice and he went there, slotted right in. He's playing every which way. He's playing on returns, he's playing on coverages, he's playing offense, he's playing defense and uh, cornerback and safety, even some linebacker. This is a kid who can play. And you know, you might think, okay, he's just a gym rat and everything like that. He's way more athletic than people give him credit for. And you know, he's a kid who has a, a huge heart on that field. He's going to give it 100, 110%. And you you know, might want to laugh at you know those analogies and things like that. But again, between St. Thomas Aquinas for three years and Deerfield Beach High School for one year, the proof is in the pudding on the field. Xavier Restrepo was a kid who could play. So, yeah, I you know did make the analogy last week that he seems to be maybe a 4A player right now as a second-year true freshman, um, where, you know, and again, the analogy was Mike Hessman, who was a career minor leaguer uh, for the Toledo Mudheads, which is the AAA team for the Detroit Tigers, who I grew up watching. And he, I think he has the minor league record for home runs but he could never really make it as a major leaguer because he couldn't really hit the curveball or a slider, and there was just a gap. But at the AAA level, he's the career leader in this thing. So he's really good above that level, but maybe just not good enough for the next level. Right now, I see Restrepo as that. He's better than the backups, and we need to see if he can hack it with the starters. Because, yeah, I think that all his numbers that he has in that scrimmage came against the second and third teams, which is great. Seven catches for 144 and two yards. So he's a class above those backups. I need to see if he can actually fit in with the starters. But he's a kid who I think is definitely going to have a role here moving forward. And, you know, I know everybody wants to have the day one 
all stars who you know step foot on campus and they're everybody's all American. It takes a little bit, you know what I mean. And I know that he might not. I know that he was a, a polarizing figure in the world of recruiting when we decided to take him. But remember, Braxton Berrios didn't come in as a freshman All American. He was a you know a great program player. He's punt returner. He ended up being a foundational guy in that offense. But it took him a couple of years into the middle end of his sophomore year, into his junior year, until he really stepped up into that starting rotation. That could be the progression with Restrepo. You know that, or even better. Uh, you know, but we'll see. But I, I definitely think, as of right now, he's at the a minimal four A player, uh, and hopefully, he's able to elevate into being a really contributing player uh, towards the top of the offense. And if, if all the reports from practice are coming out, he could easily be in that, you know, fifth, sixth wide receiver kind of thing, which is you know one or two off the bench in that area. It's 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 very possible for him, but we got to see him. I want to see him be able to do those same kind of things against the number one defense that he's done against the twos and the threes so far. There's a number of steps that you guys can take to help uh, build the channel, build the show in particular. Hit that like button on your way in. Get it done. Get it over with. Uh, then settle in to watch the show and uh, participate in the live chat, of course. Uh, share these videos out on social media. All of you, I'm guessing all of you, the reason you're here is you enjoy uh, the discussion, the debate, the analysis, and in particular, Cam's insight. So share the videos out on social media and keep in mind that the Super Chat is available and uh, your individual contributions matched with uh, what we can possibly do in the future in regards to sponsorships will help us uh, keep going here. I got a question in on the wide receiver rotation, which I'm guessing is going to be a much easier question for you to answer once you see the spring game. Yeah. Uh, honestly, well, it's it's still shaking out, but uh, the two constants that I guarantee you're going to be at the top are number three, Mike Harley, and number 11, Charleston Rambo. That's going to be uh, the foundation of the passing game, uh, at, at least at wide receiver, those two guys. Uh, you know, you got Keyshawn Smith, who's looking to make a step forward. You got uh, Michael Redding the third. We already talked about Xavier Restrepo. Uh, you know, you have, you have, you have lots of options. Um, I'm interested, interested to see what happens with um, Mark Pope and D. Williams because we haven't really heard anything from them or about them during the spring. Um, it's been like one little clip here, one little clip there, uh, but not too, too much. But, you know, all the talk of these other guys is great, and I think that they've earned it, uh, and it's it's worthy for them so far. Um, but six and eight are still on scholarship. So I don't think that, you know, just banishing them into the abyss is – reasonable even if it's maybe a little deserved by the part uh that you know they uh they dropped what 16 and 18 percent of their targeted passes catchable walls last year um but yeah i think that discounting them completely at this time is maybe a little foolhardy and you can call that a depth chart game or seniority or talk or whatever it is uh, i just don't necessarily think that writing off pope and wiggins at this point is, is a is something that we should be doing um in terms of the player, yeah, I mean, and again, there, there's much to be desired in their performance, uh, but, you know, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, you know, as we go through, you know, the next scrimmage in the spring game on the 17th, you know, we'll really be able to see uh, how that rotation is coming together. Um, and then there's always, you know, the summer uh, seven-on-sevens and things like that. So, uh, but like I said, at the top of the rotation, at wide receiver, number three, Mike Harley, number 11, uh, Charleston Rambo, and then everybody else is going to fit in behind those guys.